Hello, everyone, and welcome to Painless Universal Conversation with myself and Welsh. Ajibola. He's based all the way in Ibadan, Nigeria. Ajibola, how are you? Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm oh, fine. Please go. I'm glad you're fine. I'm actually glad you're doing well. So I just wanted to know, really talk to you about sickle cell. I understand you're a sickle cell yeah. warrior and you've been living with sickle cell and the challenges of for a very long time. And yeah. I just want to, before we even dive into this, can you tell me a little bit about who is Ajibola? Okay, uh, Jibola is a is a man that has been in existence for the past thirty five years. Yeah, living in, with a sickle cell anemia. Uh, Jibola was born is a native of a Ibadan, okay. Oyo State. Mm. Uh, Jibola was born in October twenty four, nineteen eighty four. Uh, Ajibola as a person attended the elementary school, further proceeded to secondary school, and uh, after many years of uh, struggling, after eight years of getting through with the secondary school, finally got admission into the university. You know, as a result of sickle cell, so it hinders the processes, uh, the progress, of life. Mm. So it took eight years before finally getting admission into the university. So, but today, Ajibola is a graduate. He, he has a BTEC honors in environmental biology. And uh, well, that is uh, so far as about, uh, about Ajibola. Ajibola, that's amazing. Um, and uh, you really have um, a good track record. Someone who's determined, not letting sickle cell prevent you or stop you from achieving your dream. Thank you. I really wanted to get to the question is, um, when, were you, when did you first know you had sickle cell, you were living with sickle cell disease? Actually, back in those days, we don't know much about sickle cell. The first time I heard about the word sickle cell was, was when I was in the hospital with my auntie, who happens to be my guardian. Mm -hmm. So maybe I was around seven or eight years old then. So it, it was then I could understand what they really mean by sickle cell. It was then I heard the, the word sickle cell. So, is he a sickle cell? Is he a sickle cell patient? And my auntie said yes. So that was what I actually understand what is happening in my life. So I was about eight years old before getting to understand what sickle cell is. Were you in pain or you know, what, what, what led to that curiosity that you wanted to know what sickle cell was? Because you know, if you don't have any sign of sickle cell, you don't want to know what it is. Like most people don't. But what led you to that curiosity to want to know what sickle cell? Were you? Did you suffer any crisis as a younger? When you were younger, what was it? Yeah, it was because of the frequent admission. Yeah. Of the frequent admission, the hospital visits, uh, the stigmatization from the friends back then in those days. Mm. So when you want to play with your peer group and they refuse you some certain activities, when people started calling you names and you were like, what happened? Why this name when my parent doesn't give me such a name? Mm. So you will want to find out what happens to you yeah. that you are not, that, that is making them to call you a certain name or that is that brings about the sickling in your blood cells. Mm. So yeah. that was what prompted me into 
asking a doctor that day that what do you mean by sickle cell? What is the big deal in sickle cell? Actually, I um, quite um, I knew very well that I visit the hospital a lot, and my mates doesn't. So it was it, it's, it's already baffling me until I had the word is he a sickler? Back then they refer to I to people living with sickle cell as sickler in this part of the nation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm. I, I remember growing up as well, myself, um, you know, as a child, in, I grew up in Nigeria as well. And I remember having all those questions being asked. People were always asking, why are you so slim? Exactly. Uh, why, why do you have, why, why are you always sick? And I, I got no answer. I just know, um, like, you know, it, 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 there was a day the woman called me Owolabi. I was like, who is, who is now Owolabi among among us children here. And they said, don't go near Owolabi. Owolabi in Yoruba language means somebody that, that, is, that extremely consumes money, stuff like that. Yeah. So, and and I, was, I wasn't given the name. So the woman just told my other peers, don't, don't play rough with Owolabi. I was like, the, the, name, the name sounded it's triggered something in my brain. Oulabi. What what do this woman mean by Oulabi? So that was when I I knew that actually I'm in need for something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I totally understand this. It, it can, you know, it can be very um, daunting, very difficult. But did you have any sickle crisis as you were growing up? Did you, apart from you knowing you had sickle cell because of the people around you, did you suffer I, play from? I ha- I had a lot of crisis growing up. I could I could remember vividly two incidents. Back then in 1993, I had one, which took over six months. I was bedridden for over six months. Yeah. Six good months. It's it got to a stage I was refused by all the hospitals. So after the first three months, I was taken home. So I was on bed for another four months. So I couldn't, I couldn't continue with any uh, school uh, curricular activity. I couldn't continue with any activities of life. Mm. So I was just on bed. Mm. The only thing my parents were able to do was to get a, a nurse mm. coming home to attend to me maybe twice a week as Mm. at that time. Mm. Sometimes depending on the severity of the pain per day. So Mm. she will come sometimes once a day. So, and another one, another one back in 1997 when I was, when I just entered into secondary school, JSS1 precisely, Mm. I had to drop, drop out of that school after, um, I fully recovered from the crisis because the stigma was too much on me. So I had to drop out of that school and started new school. Yeah. So there are a lot, a lot of sickle cell crisis. In fact, it got to a stage sometime that I couldn't live in a week without visiting the hospital. Yeah. As in, I, I hardly, I hardly live a week without going to the hospital. Yeah. So almost a week, I must. They, I, they will surely see me in the hospital. And, and you said something about because of this sickle cell crisis, you were not able to, you know, finish school in part yeah. of your colleague. So how when how did you how did you was it because you were always in hospital that made it difficult to finish school? Yeah, I could I couldn't I couldn't continue because I've stayed over here a term, more than a term in the hospital. So after coming back, they have done the promotional exam. So actually the school management quite understand my plight and they were, as in, they were so happy to, to have me back and ready to assist me with mm-hmm. what I've lost, mm-hmm. but the the peer pressure what i'm facing among my peers mm-hmm. couldn't allow me to further 
in that school again. Yeah. So I had to change. I myself personally tell my parents to change my school. Chipola, I need to ask you a deep question. You okay, went through, you went through this. Uh, right. How did you now say, even though I'm going through this, I'm still I've lost out on many years of school because this is a big um, question for many parents living with who have children with sickle cell, and they're so frightened that after a while that child might. What, what's the point? Look at you. You you're telling me you've missed out on school. You've missed out. You've had a difficult um, upbringing because of your sickle cell. You even personally told your parents that they should change your school. What I want to know is that how did you within yourself still find the hope? to still graduate, even though it took you eight years? What gave you that incentive to keep going on with school? It is, it, the first is my faith in God. I have this kind of faith in God that will always oblige me whatever my request is. You will, will always say yes to me. That is number one. And the second one is this challenge. There was a day I was, we were going somewhere early in the morning on a Sunday, we were going to a prayer session by my grandmother, the one who brought, the one I was with during my childhood days. So we were going to this prayer session. Back then, my grandma called the, this, this, this woman hawking bread. So she called her to buy bread. I just have to kind of give them a little distance like two step forward. So for her to complete her transactions. Then I had this woman telling my grandmother that when this child comes of age, please ma, marry for her on time. Because people like, like him mm -hmm. die untimely. Yes. So I had that, I kept my calm. So immediately my grandma released this woman. She started crying. I asked her, what makes you cry? She said, I said, she said, don't worry, it's nothing. I'm not crying. She immediately dried up the tears. And I told her, I had everything this woman is telling you. But one thing I want to assure you today is you will never marry for me. And I will never die young. So what kept me going is I don't want the woman to, to cry over me because she has labored so much. She, she labored so much on me. Mm. She truly labored so much on me. She offered a great deal on me. So these things kept, uh, kept me going through. So, and uh, my faith in God and prayers, thank God we are still here today. Oh, wow. This is amazing. I love that because I always believe when you have something that is keeping you going, keeping you motivated, it, 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 it exceeds every other thing. This is the thing that is really keeping you. And I'm absolutely glad that you have shined the light. You know, with everything you've gone through, what would be your advice to younger sickle cell warriors out there? To, you know, what is your advice? Actually, I would advise all younger sickle cell warriors never to give up never give up. That is the exact word. Never give up. Whatever they might be facing today, they should always realize that there is always light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. So we should never give up. And we should always have faith in the Lord who created us this way. I know he has something for us in store. That's why he created us like this. Because we didn't bargain for this. We didn't bargain for this at all. Yeah. So never give up. And Ajibola, I haven't asked you, what sickle cell trait are you? Are you HBSS or HBSC? HBSS, HBSS. Well, um, I just would, before we get to the final question, I really want to ask you, what would be your hope for Nigeria to help with, um, to help with the advocacy for people with sickle cell and also treatment of care? Ah. My hope, actually, I would have loved if Nigeria could come up with a way of assisting the sickle cell warriors in terms of uh, subsidizing the drugs, 
and especially these bone marrow uh, transplants that is uprising in the world of science for the sickle cell anemia, anemia warriors today. Mm -hmm. Well, if we could have, for us to have a better Nigeria, I would be glad if, they, if Nigeria can actually do this for us. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And how are you keeping well day to day? I you hope you're keeping well and every, are you, you've really improved since your you know, previous episode of always being sick. How are you keeping nowadays? Actually, I, 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 I try to understand my body language is better. So knowing that and understanding who you are, it will go a long way in helping you to cope. So I follow my body language, observe all the do's and the don'ts, then take my daily medical medications. Mm -hmm. And with God on my side, I'm good. Ajibola, this is beautiful. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Uh, you really shed some light on critical issues about sequestral, about delay, delay in education, the yeah. difficulties we face, um, which um, especially when we live in a country like Nigeria. And Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, it's always difficult. And not just Nigeria, I think the majority of the African countries are still struggling with how to deal with their medical issues. Um, yeah. I myself, I always say to people, I'm HBSS and I've had all the challenges. I understand it as well. The delay growth, the um, difficulty in education, and also relationship, as you mentioned in your bio, your Know your challenges with relationship but I, th I think if we keep talking like we you and I have just kindly shared we one day will have a, a really real good um, solution to help others and also keep helping us yeah. to live long, longer thank you so much Isabella. and enjoy yeah. the rest of your day from Nigeria and all right and you too okay thank you so much thank you yeah.